I am again doing uh, powder-filled polymer fused deposition modeling. This is my first, I guess my only video. Uh, and it's of the, again, the BAM printer, which I think I can just... Um, and this is the same company that printed the other electric car. Uh, Local Motors, if you guys have ever seen the... Uh... Yeah, they're really cool. <laughs> and uh, I believe this is a collaborative effort with Autodesk. So for... Fused deposition, actually these are sort of listed in order for the most dominant process variables. Um, and the main constricting one for most printers is mass flow rate. You can typically always make a printer move faster in Cartesian coordinates, but you're always going to be limited by how much polymer you can extrude or polymer filled with anything you can extrude. And the next one is usually move speed, because again, it, they're actually kind of conflicting with each other, mass flow rate and move speed. And layer height is another big dominant process variable. And I also put build volume here because it restricts what you can build and how much of it you can build. So yeah, it's not a direct process variable, but it does limit like economy of any sort of scale. So my first research study, so what it is is actually an iron filled ABS. And strangely enough, they use stratasys filament and ground it up. So the scope of this is to investigate how putting just iron particles into ABS, which is already pretty strong, could improve the properties of volume percent filled polymer. Uh, and actually, this is supposed to be 10%. This is something I changed before I wanted to have it downloaded. But So they did uh, a 10% iron ABS filament uh, and that they could successfully print and tested it to see if it improved uh, just some of the basic properties, which I will now explain. So, uh, do does adding these fillers improve elasticity? So, uh, the C1, C2, C3, this is, uh, I believe, 5%, 10%, 20, 30, 40, uh, and then just regular empty ABS. So, uh, and this is storage modulus, and for those who don't know, storage modulus is the elasticity of, um, there's also the loss modulus for, uh, so this is how elastic the material is. So when you start adding polymer or powder to it, you can see that it actually greatly increases how elastic it is even before it's glass transition temperature, which is why it drops off here. So obviously it was almost 100% improvement by increasing the amount of powder loading, which is C1 and not C3 or C4. So they picked C2 and proceeded to print with a 10 percent, uh, 10 volume percent iron. And you can see they did an unfilled ABS test and then a, an FE filled. And they have two different unfilled lines because one of them is actually a reinforced ABS to see if the iron was even comparable to something with just glass fiber in it. And it's not, obviously. But it it does actually improve elasticity, but not as much as other materials, is what they concluded for this study. Polymers. So then my next research study was actually on a nanofiber reinforced polymer for fused deposition. And it investigated the mechanical properties of 10 volume percent of vapor grown carbon fiber. And it's basically a, a nano carbon filament that they then put into ABS again. ABS is a good fallback for most people doing research. It's now PLA. So experimentally they they tried to test tensile strength and also layer adhesion just by looking at pictures of the layers after they'd broken the parts. It kind of shows obvious correlations. But first, adding the, the carbon fiber, does it improve tensile strength of any added manufacturing part? It's just ABS here, and then this is another ABS, but with carbon fiber. So these are the same ABS, 10% carbon fiber here. I mean, you can see it does improve material properties a little bit for tensile strength. It's what about 20% more. And here is another reinforced fiber ABS, just glass fiber. And it 
is higher than the carbon fiber reinforced again, so not even up to par with what already exists. And then they tried a different orientation. So this was a, a 1090, so a pretty, so you take the part, turn it 10 degrees off center, and then you print everything, nine, all the layers 90 degrees oriented. So you're printing off the Cartesian system of the printer and then printing 90 degrees to that. And it's one of the worst case scenarios. So that's why this is really low. And then when they printed in the completely ideal situation, which is a zero zero, so you just overlay perfectly straight, they actually were able to achieve really impressive tensile strengths, like what about twice what they had for the original material. Yeah, so it, it improved tensile strength quite a bit, and this is the 15% from about here, is what I was guesstimating based on the, the standard deviation also. Uh, and then as for layer adhesion, they took uh, an ABS sample with nothing in it and broke it, and then this is kind of, you can see how pretty much all the layers are bonded, except for, I mean, here a little bit, and in between the outer edge and the infill. Uh, and this here, these two pictures are both carbon fiber filled. And you can see that um, there's a little bit of terrible adhesion there. And then in between each row, there's bad adhesion here. And they concluded that it's because they hand drew this polymer and didn't think that the diameter was inconsistent while they were printing it. So they got some parts where they were under extruding and you get really bad layer adhesion. So that's where this picture comes in, whereas this one may have been over extruding, but it still came out pretty nice. Uh, so, yeah, that was really stupid after reading the whole paper. Um, okay, so for FDM, there's not really a direct process model. There's energy use models and uh, I guess efficiency models, but nothing that besides you're limited by this factor, so you can't turn up this factor as high. So just obvious limitations. So I didn't want to include that because it's kind of pointless if you know much about FDM. But uh, so there's been two studies that I found that do a Taguchi matrix analysis of not an actual printer. They did a handful of assumptions to basically <laughs> go between surface roughness and dimensional tolerance. And the first, this first bullet is actually one study, and they concluded that layer um, height is actually the greatest effect on surface roughness, but they concluded exactly opposite of everything that exists in the 3D printing industry. They concluded that higher layer height lowered surface roughness, which is wrong. So I didn't include that. So, and then also, the second study concluded that uh, layer height, raster orientation, and extru extrusion width have the greatest effect again, which do have great effects on dimensional accuracy. However, they concluded completely backwards again. They concluded that high layer height and straight raster orientation and huge extrusion width gives you the best dimensional accuracy. And here's references.